Hi, my name is Yi Chen. I'm Jingde. I'm Chu Han. I'm Hao Wei. We are AM Radio team and we desire super head of conversion AM receiver. Hi, I'm Jingde. Design the demodulator. Yi Chen designs the mixer. Chu Han designs the VCO and Hao Wei designs the LA and PGA. So at the input of our receiver system, we have an antenna for the AM channel from 500 kHz to 1700 kHz using LC10 structure. L here is a row antenna. C is a tuning capacitor. By tuning the capacitor, we can shift the natural frequencies to select the AM channel. But the problem is the Q here is not large. In other words, the selectivity is not good. So even though there are some AM channel is not located at the natural frequencies, it still can enter our receiver system if the signal is strong enough. So the LA will provide 10 times gain for this multiple AM channel for following processing, but introduce few noise. To do a better selectivity, we are using up commercial strategy. So we have a off-chip crystal filter between the mixer and PGA. The crystal filter it's a very high Q bandpass filter with center frequencies located at 10.7 MHz, but only 15 kHz bandwidth. Out of the bandwidth, it has 18 dB attenuation and up to 32 dB for the further frequencies. So to select the AM channel, the VCO need to generate the frequencies we need for the mixer, and then the mixer can mix the AM channel we want up to the center frequencies of the bandpass filter. For example, if you want to listen to a 700 kHz AM channel, the VCO should generate a 10 MHz signal. And then this 700 kHz AM channel can mix up to the 10.7 MHz. So even though there are some near channel like 600 kHz or 720 kHz, they are also mixed up to the center frequencies but because they are out of the, the bandwidth of the center frequency, so they will be greatly attenuated. By the way, why we need to use the up conversion strategy rather than down conversion is because we try to avoid the image flipping. When when you use the up conversion strategy, the VCO need to generate a 10 MHz signal, except for the 700 kHz AM channel, only a 20.7 MHz signal can fold it to the center frequencies of this bandpass filter. But we know the 20.7 MHz signal is something FM channel is out of the range of our antenna, so we don't need to worry about it. But if you use a down conversion strategy, for example, you want to mix a 1 MHz AM channel down to 100 kHz, uh, that's the same center frequencies of other bandpass filter. So the VCO need to generate a 900 kilohertz signal. But at the same time, another 800 kilohertz AM channel also can fold it to the center frequencies. So at the center frequency, you can see two AM channel. That is the reason we want to use the up conversion rather than down conversion. So the crystal filter will output the clean AM channel for the PGA. The PG, PJ has four stage amplifier. It can provide the gain from 20 dB to 70 dB instead of 10 dB. So we have so many gain choice to make sure we can amplify the AM channel large enough for the demodulator to extract the envelope out. The envelope of the modulated signal here is the audio we want. But right now the envelope still have lot for high frequencies ripple that's from the carrier signal so we need a activate low pass filter to remove this high frequencies ripple to output the clean audio signal for the off chip power amplifier speaker so this is the whole test span setup uh these are this is the antenna l part uh, mixer and lm bias part uh, this is a uh, crystal filter, programmable gain amplifier, uh, envelope detector, and you go from here, we connect it to a power amplifier and then a speaker. Uh, so we are not using a probe to measure the mixer output. 
now I now this is uh, power off and I power on the mix uh, the whole test bench. So you can see the uh, or orange line is the mixer output and the FFT part. Uh, this is 10.3 megahertz and we are now so this peak should pass the crystal filter. Now uh, we turn on the uh, the power amplifier. And then we can hear, uh, hear one channel. And now I tune the VCO to move this pick, to move the left part to the 10.7 megahertz. So that you talk, but I'll be there. So now the, the this is in, all the channels are in the stall band, so you can hear almost nothing. We move this P to move to near to 10.3 megahertz. So I'm this is touching. another channel. Five, 10, 15 years down the road. And so finally, we can also program the game and selling anything because the market goes down a little bit. I know I'm not touching that money for a while. So the volume is so so over time. Not. It's going to do very Thank well. In our test case, we will use the laptop to generate the audio signal for the signal generator to do a AM modulation with a 700 kHz carrier. But due to the full scale range ADCs, the signal generator requires the input messages to be large enough. Otherwise, the AM depth of the output modulated signal is pretty low. So before the audio signal enter the signal generator, we need a power amplifier to amplify the audio signal from 200 milliwatt to 4 watts, but keep the nice linearity at the same time. So the yellow curve here is the audio output from the power amplifier. And the Blue curve is the modulated output from the signal generator. In other words, we have built a artificial 700 kilohertz AM channel, and the output modulated signal will pass through a attenuator. Uh, this attenuator just convenience for us to adjust the amplitude, and it will connect with uh, LCs in series, so we can use the Q to amplifies the input modulated signal. So the input modulated signal here is the blue curve is about one volt. But the pink curve here is the voltage difference across the antenna or the inductor is about 30, 30 volt. So right now the antenna should generate a strong magnetic signal for our receiver system. So the antenna of our receiver system can capture the 700 kilohertz AM channel from the transmitter. And in this case, we will bypass the crystal filter because the input is only one AM channel and we don't need to do the selectivity. And we want to illustrate the signal flow through the chip only. And the green curve here is the output after the low noise amplifier. The yellow curve is the output after the mixer. And the blue envelope is the output after the demodulator. And also the, this envelope will go to the power amplifier and speaker. So right now I will turn on the volume.
In the design of our mixer, uh, we have four inputs and two outputs. Uh, two inputs are here from the LNA and two other two inputs are here from the local oscillator and the two outputs are here. One goes through the off-chip crystal filter and the other just bypass it. In our uh, testing of the mixer, I generated a 800 and 20 kilohertz sine wave with the amplitude of 50 millivolts to peak to the uh, to this point, which is the testing point. Uh, this point is the output of the LNA and the input of the mixer. And here is here is the wave generated by the local oscillator. As you can see from the oscilloscope, uh, we have our input signal here and the square wave here. And here is our mixing signal from from the output of the mixer. As you can see, uh, our our signal are up convert are converted to the 10.7 megahertz, and we if we do the FFT measurement of this waveform, we can see that there is a peak at 10.7 megahertz. You can see here, this is our 10.7 megahertz uh, up conversion signal. Hi everyone, now I'm testing the VCO. This is a signal generator, and I use this to give the control voltage. And I'm using probe 2 to measure the VCO output. Now I power on the whole system, and the green waveform is uh, VCO output with uh, amplitude of 2.59 volts and uh, now the frequency is about 9.9 megahertz. Now I tune the potential meter to change the frequency. And you can see the frequency is going down and we can also use the uh, control voltage to tune the, to control the frequency output. And I will set this to 600 millivolts first because uh, below this voltage, the transistor isn't turned on, so there will not be any effect on, or very less effect to change the frequency output. And now I will change it by 10 millivolts per step. So you can see the uh, voltage control is also working and, and it can cover the frequency range as range we, as we want. And finally, we will do the uh, jitter measurement. I reset the statistics and we are, let's look at the period uh, standard deviation. So after about, now it's three kilo thousand samples, the standard deviation of the period measurement is around 97 picosecond. And this is also the jitter.